Hey everyone, Brady from Texture Labs here, and today I am proud to present to you one of my favorite Photoshop solutions. It's the super easy grunge stamp Photoshop typography setup. Is it actually all those things? I think it is, but the real beauty here is that everything is live. The type is live, the effect itself is live, so once things are set up, you can adjust it on the fly, and I will run you through how all this works. Let's get started. All right, Command N to get started with a new document, and I'm gonna work at 3840 by 2160, or 4K. High resolution, but I'm a firm believer that soon enough everything will be 4K, or 8K, or 60, 70K, and it never hurts to future-proof your techniques. Background color will be white, and create. Then T for my type tool, and I'm gonna set the color to black, and this is a font called Anderson Thunderbirds R Go, but this will work with just about any font. Command return to exit live type mode and Command T to transform and scale that up. And I'll just eyeball it to the center, something about like that. Then first thing I'm gonna do is apply two effects to this type. And the effects are gonna create sort of a reference map of where grunge will go. So bear in mind that lighter values in the type will end up being more distressed. So I'll go effects, and select inner glow. So I'll reset to defaults, then I'm just gonna put in some rough values as a jumping off point. So I'll take the opacity to 50%, and I do need to change this source checkbox to center, and I'll bring the choke up to 25%, and the size up to 75 pixels. And at the bottom, I'm gonna turn the range all the way up to 100, and finally, I'll change this contour tab to one of the presets, this curved profile. And one more effect, I'll zoom way in here. So as it stands, these lighter values are gonna to translate to more grunge toward the center of the letters, which is good. But I wanna end up with a little bit of grunge around the edges too, so I need a few gray values on the edges. I'll turn on the inner shadow effect to get some lighter values in the edges. I'm gonna reset this one to defaults as well. Then I'll change the blend mode to screen and the color to white. Then I'm gonna bring the opacity all the way to 100, and distance I'll take down to zero, set the choke at 10, and the size also to 10. And finally, I will also change this contour tab to the curved profile, and okay. And next, I'll get some texture in here and start to make this work. I'm gonna open Texture Labs Ink Paint 134 which is a high-res image of real rolled ink, and this can work with all kinds of different grungy textures, but generally works best with ones that are grayscale or black and white, and have a full range of values between black and white. So I'll Command A to select all here, Command C to copy, and Command W to close it, then Command V, paste it right on top here. And I wanna create a clipping mask so that the texture only lives inside of the letters, but I need to do one crucial thing first. I need to drag this text layer down to the folder icon and put it into its own group. This basically just tells Photoshop to apply any of these effects, the inner glow and the inner shadow, before it interacts with any of the other layers. So with that in its own group, I'll create that clipping mask by hovering in between the texture layer and the folder layer and giving it an option click. Then I'm gonna move the texture around a little bit. I'll use Command T to transform and just scale it down a bit, maybe move it roughly into a place where I like how it sits in the letters, something about like that. And next, I'm gonna change the blending mode of this texture to hard mix. So this is a blend mode that sort of acts like a threshold. It takes the values of the two layers combined and gives you a final value of either black or white. And it's kind of a harsh look right out of the box, but with hard mix, you actually have a ton of control, not by using the opacity slider, but by using this fill slider. The fill slider doesn't do anything distinct on most of the blending modes, but with hard mix, it does. And you can almost think of it like an intensity slider. I'm gonna bring the fill level to 85%. And there we go, so still black and white values, but with just enough softness to get rid of that crunchiness. I'm actually gonna make one adjustment to this texture. It's actually got a little too much detail in it, so let me smooth that out by giving it a single filter, blur more. Okay, so just like that, we have the basics of the look all set up. Grunge is in the letters, and we're getting a few of these dark edges that give it a natural printed look, but let me show you just how much room we have to experiment from here. And if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, please do hit that like button and be sure to subscribe. 
In the next tutorial, we're going to get into how to build this spray painted punk rock look, which is actually pretty easy to build. All right, back in the document, and because the grunge is being controlled by the effects on the text layer, I can double click to open the effects right back up, and I have tons of control over how I want this to look. So the inner glow effect is really your main control panel. The opacity slider is going to bring the overall intensity up and down, and then these edge and choke sliders control how large or how sharp I want that ink outline at the edge to be. It's actually kind of gratifying just to push these around and see what you come up with. There's actually a lot of different looks you can get with just this one texture and this one font. And check this out. Because the type is still live, I can still scroll through fonts and that grunge gets automatically applied on the fly. Let's say I ended up picking a lighter font like this font early times. Let me scale that down and then I can open my inner glow effect and push it around here just to get the right amount and scale of grunge in there. So maybe I need to adjust the size and choke sliders to bring the grunge closer to the edges and bring the opacity down just a bit to get the right amount of grunge. So super versatile and you can imagine this works really well for building custom fonts. I'm just gonna back up a few steps here to my original font and I'll run through one more thing which is how to put this over a background. So let me open Texture Guys Paper 131, a nice heavy cold press paper with a lot of tooth, as they say. And I'll copy that and paste it right over the background here. So you can see the grungy type setup created a black and white grunge rather than black and transparent. So I'll switch the blend mode of this folder with the type in it to multiply. Then I'm gonna blend it into the paper using the blend if options. So to do that, I wanna access the blending options for this folder. I'll right click on the folder and all the way at the top here, select blending options. And in blending options down at the bottom here is the blend if section. I'm going to the underlying layer slider at the very bottom and I'm gonna hold option and drag this white value down and pick up some of the texture of the paper. Maybe leave that at about 190. And I do go into a little more detail on these blending tools in the Essential Texture Tools video, so be sure to check that one out. But that is looking good, so I'll hit OK. And finally, I'm going to create a little more contrast across the entire image with an adjustment layer on top. So I'll go all the way to the top layer, and then under the Adjustment Layers menu, create a Levels Adjustment Layer. And I think all I really need to do here is bring out the whites by bringing this white input down to about 220. And that's it, the super easy grunge stamp Photoshop typography setup. I hope it'll make a nice addition to your arsenal. Let me know in the comments below. You can check out texturelabs.org for ink textures, grunge, and much, much more. Please do hit that like button and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.